Hi, I'm Emo, and I'm a research scientist from Network Analytics in Meta. In this talk, I'm going to share one of the monitoring tool we built, MiniSampler, which we use to characterize the network traffic at large scale in our data center network. First, I'd like to share one of our investigation story in the production network. If we check the traffic metrics on the left, we can see that during the five minutes interval, the ingress and egress traffic are pretty stable. So they are about 15 gigabit per second, and it doesn't exceed the link capacity. But if we check the discards metrics on the right, we can see that at every minute, there are constant discards. So this leads to a question. If our link is not oversubscribed, where does this discards coming from? So this is actually one of the real problems we faced in our network investigation. Back in early November, one of our critical data pipeline service starts to see massive congestion discards. The discards keeps growing to an alerting level and starts to cause performance degradation. In the initial of the investigation, we check the capacity utilization. The minute level utilization metrics shows that the egress capacity has been only used by 30%. So this makes the investigation very difficult. So the network metrics we had didn't give us any signal on why the discards happen and where the discards coming from. And also there were like multi multiple significant change in the code base and configuration itself. So it would be very difficult to trace back which change actually caused the problem. The investigation took about three weeks and we finally found that the root cause is the service behavior itself. So it uploads the data synchronously, which caused the synchronized bursts that arrive at the rack switch and caused the contention there. So the application do have some mechanism to inject randomness into its behavior, but the mechanism is not effective enough. So it got finally synchronized. The way we found uh, the problem is to use the TCP dump. We capture the PCAP from the, all the machines on the rack simultaneously, and then we be able to observe the synchronized microbursts as shown on the figure on the right. We got a lot of lessons from this investigation. We realized that our minute level network metrics doesn't good enough for such investigation. So though the TCP dump would be very helpful, it's not something that we can deploy fully wide because it is CPU intensive and can interfere with other production services. And also to be able to observe the synchronized behavior like this, we need to have manual operation on the TCP dump and then the data analysis would also be pretty complicated. We also realized that the switch-based monitoring solution is not suitable for this case because the fine-grained monitoring requires heavy instrumentation on the switch and it cannot be deployed fleet-wide. So in summary, the investigation make us realize that although the aggregate data can cover most of the common use cases, there are situations that, that require the fine granularity monitoring on the traffic dynamics. So it would be very helpful to have the TCP dump like data at large scale, but we need to make the monitoring to a lightweight so it could be deployed fleet-wide. Also, the historical data would be helpful because sometimes we need to trace back to a multiple days before or even months before. Hopefully, after the long speech, I have convinced you that it would be very helpful if we can have a monitoring tool to be able to get the traffic dynamics at the fine granularity at the milliseconds level or even at the microseconds level. Next, I'll cover how we design MiniSampler and its extension sync MiniSampler to be able to synchronize connect data across the hosts on the same rack. And then I'll talk about two use cases of the mini sampler data 
to investigate the real network problem. And finally, I'll touch upon some of future work to wrap up the talk. So for the mini sampler, the basic requirement, of course, is that it should be able to capture the traffic data at fine granularity. And when I say fine granularity, it means it connects data points at 100 microseconds, 1 milliseconds, and 10 milliseconds level. Ideally, we want to connect data from every server in an entire fleet in our data center network. And also, the two needs to have low overhead. So it means it should have minimal impact on the packet, packet transmission time, even at the line rate. The storage overhead needs to be low because we need to store data for every server for the entire fleet. It needs to be CPU efficient because it should not interfere with other services that are running on our production network. It needs to be programmable, so it could be easy to be deployed and maintained on every server in our fleet. So those requirements need to the design of MiniSampler. It has two major components. One is the scheduler in the user space, and the other is the eBPF program on the kernel space, where the packets is actually getting captured and inspected. So we choose to use eBPF because it allows us to be able to inject customized code into the kernel without having to compile the kernel completely and then upgrade all the servers in the entire fleet. So first, let's look at the user space components. The user space mini sampler is responsible for launching an eBPF program periodically, say every few minutes. And then in each data connection, it connects about 2,000 samples. The data includes the ingress and egress traffic volume, the retransmits, the ECN, and the number of connections. So the kernel space program is where the data is actually connected. So the mini sampler attracts the time series of the data using a TC filter implemented in BPF. So it would increment the counters based on the time offset. In order to save the memory, we use a sketch to estimate the number of active connections. And the sketch only takes 128 bit. This is a visualization of the mini sampler data. So the data here shows a microbursts with both the retransmission and ingress ECN. The mini sampler allows us to connect data on every server, but at its own pace. So in order to support the synchronized data connection, so we can observe the synchronized behavior on the servers, we extend mini sampler and build the sync mini sampler. So the sync mini sampler has a control plane on each region, which is responsible for coordinating the data connection. The controller would iterate over the racks and schedule concurrent data connection. The request would be sent to the server, and then on the server side, it has an agent running on each host, and the agent would receive the on-demand data connection request and then starts the connection at the requested time. After the data connection was done, the data will be sent back to the control plane and then passed to either an analyzer, which does the burst classification and then contention analysis. The summary data would then be stored to a database for long-term storage. So here's a visualization of the synchronized burst data we connected from hosts running on the same rack. So in summary, the mini sampler and sync mini sampler data provide aggregated traffic points across all CPUs, including the ingress and egress traffic volume, the retransmits, ECN, and number of connections. It also provides 
flexibility to connect the per CPU data and also distinguish between the ECT versus the non ECT. So, if you are interested in seeing the interaction between the in region traffic and across region traffic, you can enable the configuration on the mini sampler. Also, the sync mini sampler provides synchronized data connection. So, we are able to observe the synchronized bursts on the servers across the same rack. What mini sampler doesn't provide is the flow information. So we use the sketch to estimate the number of connections. So we do not need to store the information about the flow, such as the IP address and port number. And also the mini sampler would be wake up every few minutes to do the data connection. So it's not like continuously connecting data. So now I've introduced the mini sampler architecture and its data. Next, I'll talk about two use cases of the mini sampler data to investigate the network problem. We've used the data to find the NIC firmware bug in our fleet. And also we've used the mini sampler data to do the microburst and condensation analysis. And then find that some of the condensation is caused by the service placement. So the first problem we found with mini sampler data is a NIC issue. We observed the symptom that the, there are significant increase in the query latency. And then we quickly realized that the increase in latency is caused by increased level of retransmission in specific region. If we look at the link utilization data, we see that the link utilization is low, but different from the synchronized burst case that I've shared in the beginning of the talk, there's no congestion is observed. And then we use the mini sampler data to observe the traffic pattern in fine granularity. So if we take a look at the mini sampler data shown on the right, we can see a very weird traffic pattern. The traffic would go to zero every few milliseconds. And then when it comes back, the backlog traffic would cause a follow-up of bursts of retransmitted packets, which is the increase in retransmission we see in the aggregated data. So without mini sampler, it would be very difficult to observe such pattern in a milliseconds level. And also because the mini sampler is deployed fleet-wide, so we are able to do the fleet-wide analysis and then found all the hosts that see this weird traffic pattern. We found that those patterns appear on the server that running our specific NIC version. And we realized it's a NIC firmware bug. And then we quickly work with the vendor to fix the patch to mitigate the problem. The other problem that we found with the mini sampler data is the congestion caused by the synchronized microbursts. So the symptom is similar to what I described in the beginning of the talk. We see the increase in the congestion jobs, but if we look at the average link metrics, um, the link at the minute level is not overutilized. But different from the first investigation story, this is not only caused by the service behavior. So before I get into the root cause of the problem, I'd like to first introduce why the synchronized bursts can be a big problem for the entire fleet. So for our data center network, uh, the switches use a dynamic shared buffer. So although for each queue on a pod, we allocate their queues to a specific server in order to provide isolation for the services that are coming from different servers, the isolation mechanism is not perfect because there is no fixed allocation for each queue. So the bar charts here shows the buffer share per queue, how the buffer share per queue is changed as the number of contending queues are increased. So we can see that with more active queues, they may contain four buffer resources and then cause contention in the buffer switch. 
So we do the fleet byte analysis with this contingent data we got from the mini sampler, and we observe by model pattern on some of the region. So the bit by model pattern means that although most of the racks do not have high contention, we see that about 20% of the racks are highly contented. And on those highly contented racks, about 60% of the tasks of the same service type. So that's a machine learning type. And on the low contented racks, this machine learning type of service is only about 4% of the total tasks. So the machine learning task has specific requirement on the hardware itself and also have requirement on the machine capacity. So our task placement algorithm would prefer to co-locate those tasks densely on specific clusters. So this density co-location calls the microbursts by the machine learning task itself and also to make matters worse, some of those services that are not bursty but placed on the same racks would be affected. So if we look at the retransmission graphs on the right, we can see that the retransmission on the bursty service, the service A in blue line, is actually correlated with the increase in the retransmission on the non-bursty service, the service B in yellow line. So that means the non bursty service become the victim. And when the contention on the rack switch gets severe, it actually can push the contention to the cluster switch. So that means other services on the same cluster would also be affected. So the, we use the mini sampler data for our network investigation. And there are other broader problem domains where the mini sampler data can also be useful. For example, we use the data to help improve the buffer management. As I just introduced before, on the rack switch buffer in our data center network is shared resources. And now we enforce a fixed threshold which cannot handle the traffic dynamics like the microbursts very well. So with the many sample data, we can get a better understanding of the network dynamics. And then we can come up with more clever buffer management strategy. For example, we can try to enforce, enforce a threshold per task, or we can do the dynamic buffer sharing with different network dynamics. The mini sample data can also be used to improve the congestion control algorithm. So it can help us understanding the interaction of the traffic dynamics like microbursts and the congestion control. So we could improve the congestion algorithm to improve the fairness and buffer utilization and to use the unexploited resources in our network. We are also interested in using the data to quantify the impact of services interference when we run the network harder. So now we are in the process of stacking more and more services on the same hosts, but that could potentially increase the interference between the services and then it could cause the service performance degradation. So with multiple services running on the same hosts, all the problem that we've seen on the rack switch buffer can also happen on the hosts, say on the NIC. But the isolation mechanism we have, like the Q per host mechanism on the rack switch buffer does not exist in the host. So we need to come up better strategy to enforce the isolation. So to conclude, during our investigation on the network issue, we realized that the aggregate data is not enough for some of the cases that require a better understanding of the traffic dynamics at fine granularity. So having a tool like MiniSampler, which is lightweight and can be deployed bit wide, would be very helpful for the complicated network investigation. Also, by analyzing the mini data, 
we found that the synchronized bursts can cause the contention and affect other services in the rack. And to fix this problem, it needs multiple components work together. For example, it requires smarter service placement algorithm, smarter buffer management strategy, and better congestion control algorithm. And the mini sampler data can capture the traffic dynamics and then can further help us to develop the clever strategy for the buffer management and congestion control. So that concludes my talk. If you have any question about the mini sampler or you are interested in using the mini sampler data for your own analysis, so feel free to reach out to us. And thank you for your time.